Hello everyone, welcome. We, today we will be understanding about one very easy topic which is, is matter around us pure? So in the previous session we have discussed about matter but in today's session we will be discussing that whether that matter of course solid, liquid, gas is it pure or not? Okay, so I hope you all remember that matter is anything which occupies certain space and has mass. So let's understand that what are pure substances and how they are useful and how, what are the different properties of them also. So first of all, let's understand what do you mean by pure substances. So pure as the name suggests, yes, everything in this particular substance will be similar, will be uniform. Okay. So yes, pure substances, they have definite chemical compositions because of their uniformity. Let's write down chemical composition. And if they have definite chemical composition, that means they must be having their definite physical as well as chemical properties as well. So this is how we can define a pure substance which have a definite chemical composition and definite physical and chemical properties. So this is how as these substances are uniform, they are definite, so we can say that they all are homogeneous. They all are homogeneous. So this is how we can understand. So well, let's understand by certain examples. So examples can be elements. So don't worry, we will be understanding more about elements and compounds also. And there is a basic difference between elements and compounds. So let's quickly understand first of all what are elements. So elements, they are the pure substance. Definitely they come under the category of pure substance. Why they are the pure substance? Because they are made up of only one kind of atom. So yes, only one kind of atom they are made up of. So let's talk about sodium, magnesium, calcium, potassium, all these elements, oxygen, hydrogen, they all are having one kind of atom. So that is why they are the pure substances. Let's understand compounds also. So yes, the compounds as the name suggests, they are actually being made from two different or more than two different chemical elements. So two or more different elements. So that is the major difference between elements and compounds. And as they are being made from two or more different chemical elements, so yes, they are chemically combined by a definite proportion. So proper uniform proportion they will be combining chemically, only then they can make a compound. So for example, sodium chloride, uh, we have potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, so many compounds we study. So yes, they are chemically combined and uh, different elements are there which are chemically combined. And yes, we can also decompose as well. It depends upon how we have to decompose them. So yes, compounds are also the pure substances. Let's talk about elements. So elements are of different classifications as well. So let's quickly uh, classify elements. So there are three basic classification. Metals. Then we have non-metals and there are also the elements which are called as metalloids. So these are also very very important and yes they have different other exceptions as well. So let's write down metalloids.
So we'll quickly have a brief about metals, non-metals and metalloids and you will be understanding uh, this more in detail in the higher studies also but let me just give you a brief about it. They are the metals, metals are those elements basically uh, which has quite good luster. Luster means shiny, the appearance is shiny. They have high density, these elements are having high density high melting point, boiling point, so I'm just writing the abbreviations, melting point, boiling point, as well as sonority, malleability, ductility. So these are all the different properties uh, which can be drawn into thin wires. Okay, so yes, they are the also very important property that do play in electricity concept as well. They are the good conductors, very good conductors of heat and electricity. So we have different elements like iron, gold, aluminium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, they all are metals. So yes, there are certain exceptions also, but we will be understanding in higher grades. So let's move first of uh, next secondly to the non-metals. Non-metals, they generally do not have a uh, luster, but yes, we have different other exceptions okay so that we will be understanding in the higher one that are the uh, the next one the iodine and graphite they are luscious but yes they are non-metals but still they are luscious so these are one of the exceptions that you will be understanding in higher grades so other properties of non-metals can be they are also the bad conductor of heat and electricity bad conductor of heat and electricity and uh, they are neither ductile nor variable and uh, they are mostly solids liquids and gases for example in the solid one we have carbon silicon phosphorus and uh, usually metals are solid but yes the exceptions are also there in the liquid one we have bromine and in the gas one we have hydrogen chlorine so these are the properties of metals, non-metals and now we will be discussing about the metalloids. So metalloids, they actually show the properties of both metals as well as non-metals. That is a major, major difference. So yes, they are used as mostly the semiconductors. They are mo mostly used as semiconductors. For example, let's write down the example like boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony. So these are all the examples of the uh, metalloids. We have noble gases also that are mostly in gaseous state and they are uh, very, very, very less uh, reactive also as they are chemically inert. So this is the just brief about elements I wanted to give you all. And we have already discussed about the compounds also. So that are the examples of the pure substances. So let's quickly move ahead. If the substances are pure, that are, we have understood elements and compounds, but if the substances are not pure, let's quickly find out what are those substances called as. Those substances will be called as impure substances. So yes, as the name suggests that they are made up of two or more different substances which are mixed together. So yes, two or more different substances which are mixed together, actually mixed to uh, these substances in the pure substances that in the definite proportion. But if we talk about impure substances, they are being mixed together in any proportion. So the proportion is not definite here in the impure substances. So for example, these can be classified into other substances also. That is homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. So as we have combined two or more different substances in any proportion, so that means we have made mixtures like salt and water, sand and water, we have made a mixtures like sandwiches, burger, as they all are requiring different other substances to make one substance, which is a mixture. So yes, they are be classified into two different substances, which are 
homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures so let's now start with the impure substances and quickly understand about first mixture which is our homogeneous mixtures so homo as the word indicates homogeneous homo means uniform uniformity will be maintained here yes they might be similar to the pure substances but as we have combined different substances so we have made a mixture different substances has been combined so we have made a mixture but how we are combining we are combining in the uniformity will be maintained and these mixtures having uniform composition throughout their bodies so uniform composition is there composition means how that particular object or substance is being formed so if that substance is formed uniformly then definitely these are the homogeneous mixture so let's find out example that will be easier for you to understand for example salt and water so when we have taken a glass let's take a glass here beaker and we have added water into it let's add water and i have filled this water suppose 100 ml water and now i am adding salt or sugar after some time you will be observing that this particular beaker the uniformity will be maintained how because we can only see the water is still there right how it is happening because the salt is totally gets dissolved in it so that is the homogeneous mixture or the uniformity they gonna maintain so this is because we can find why they are the homogeneous mixtures why the uniformity has been maintained because we cannot see from our naked eyes that extra boundary be between the salt and water we cannot differentiate we cannot differentiate the boundary or any salt particle being separated out from our naked eyes so these are the homogeneous mixtures that we have made and let's understand the next property when a ray of light will be passed through this mixture of salt and water the path of light this path of the light will be not seen will not be seen the path of light will not be seen so let's understand more about homogeneous mixture let's make examples and classify it so now let's make a solution and let's get back to our previous example which is salt and water so solutions is nothing but they are the uniform mixture as we have created salt and water this is the uniform mixture that that we have created and it is a mixture of two or more than two substances so yes these mixtures are the solutions so we have taken one example where salt and water that is a mixture that is a solution we have made big basically so the depends upon the physical state we have taken one solid and one liquid we have other examples also let's mix other states of matter as well so if we mix liquid and liquid we have other examples as well like water and ink you can do this activity after understanding from this session also that you will be making a solution then we have solid into solid as well if we gonna mix both the solid we can form alloys to make different properties and make it in different other areas so we combined solids with other solids to get different properties that we make alloys we have gas into gas that is the most easiest example is air air is comprising of different other gases like of course oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide helium other gases also and then we have solid and liquid we have already made salt and water sugar and water we have solid and gas as well which is hydrogen hydrogen is a gas and it is being dissolved with metals 
and the last one sixth part will be liquid and gas that are also the very very easy example soda water uh, soda water when we open the bottle we have the fizz sound to comes that indicates the presence of carbon dioxide and it is being dissolved in water so yes these are depends upon the different physical states we have different mediums so now let's move and understand more about the solution and understand more properties of the solution let's take an example of this salt and water only and understand this with other properties also so when once we have made the solution we require at least two substances so solution we have made and suppose we are making salt solution and for making salt solution we require two things salt and water so as we have taken in a beaker water and we have added pinch of salt right so the salt which is being added into the beaker this we have taken in smaller quantity so usually the solute is in the smaller quantity whereas the solvent is in the greater quantity so in this particular example of salt solution salt is acting as a solute whereas water is acting as a solvent so you all can write down confusions might be created but let's understand in this way the substance which is taken in smaller quantity mostly solutes are taken smaller in quantity whereas solvents are taken in larger or greater quantity so that this is how we can understand and identify which among the following will be the solute and solvent in a solution so now let's quickly define what are solute and what are solvent so this combine and we are making a solution so let's understand first of all solute the substance that is added to the solvent so we are adding solute into the solvent to form a solution that is called as solute and what will be this definition for a solvent the substance in which another substance it is a substance in which another substance is being mixed to form a solution so i hope it is clear solution we have made which is solute plus solvent and we have other examples like sugar and water as well so this was about solution now let's quickly move ahead and discuss certain very important properties of a solution keeping in mind the example of salt solution so in the previous topics we have understood that it is a homogeneous mixture so that will be the number one property it is a homogeneous mixture homo homo means uniform and once we have dissolved salt into the water we cannot see the particles we cannot see the particles through our naked eyes as they are why now let's understand why we cannot see the particles from the naked eyes why we cannot see that where is salt being dissolved in the water we can only see the water are there right water is there so now let's find out what is the reason behind why this particular salt or sugar being totally dissolved and we cannot see any boundary or any differentiation why because the particles are very small even smaller than 1 nanometer so that is the major major reason behind that why we cannot see the particles through our naked eyes because they are very small as 1 nanometer in diameter so that will be the second property let's move to the third property that we have also understood the path of light is also not visible here the path of light is not visible through the solution let's quickly move ahead and of course that is the major 
one this we have already discussed as well that we cannot separate the particles easily by filtration as they are totally being dissolved so cannot separate particles through filtration so that are the major properties of the solution and thinking about yes we have different other types of solutions as well like what are the stable solutions different other types are also being involved so these are the major properties of a solution that can be asked so let's quickly move and understand different other types of solutions so number one type is the dilute solutions so whenever you hear the word dilute you have to understand that in this particular solutions solvent is added more solvent is more in this particular solutions so dilute solutions the concentration is very less as the solvent is more because they the solute can easily dissolve in the water so a solution in which the concentration of the solute is much less as compared to the solvent so for example if we mix 1 gram of salt in 500 ml of water then of course the salt solution will be obtained that will be diluted because very lesser amount of solute is there as compared to the solvent so if we keep on adding the sol uh, but if we keep on adding the solute in only 500 ml of water okay so at that time a point will be coming where no more solute will be able to dissolve in the given amount of solvent so that stage will be called as saturation point that the solutions saturation point has come that it will not able to dissolve more solute into the given amount of solvent but there are certain cases also by which we can increase the saturation point uh, by heating or by adding more solvent into it that we will be understanding also so these are the saturated solutions that they have become that that means no more solute will be able to dissolve in the given amount of solvent we have another one that will be the unsaturated solution another type of solution which will be the unsaturated solutions so unsaturated that means still it has the space so that more solute can be dissolved so that means it has not achieved its saturation yet that means more solute can be dissolved so we can add more solute in a given amount of solvent the, that level has not achieved so that is called as unsaturated solutions and we can say that the dilute solutions can be called as unsaturated solutions because they have still the space left because there is a large amount of solvent in the dilute solutions let's move to the third one which is the concentrated solutions as the name suggest so concentrated here the amount of when we make a solution there is a large amount of solute which is there in the solvent to make the concentrated solutions so that will be called as concentrated solutions there are other solutions as well like a saturated solution we have already discussed aqueous solutions aqueous as the name suggests we are calling it as a water so any solution in which we are taking solvent as water these are the aqueous solutions and non aqueous solutions in which the solvent is other than the water the water is not there for example alcohol acetone if you are taking that as a solvent that means we are not taking water as a solvent and that becomes the non aqueous solutions 
so i hope this has been cleared we have discussed about types of solutions as well now let's quickly understand then when we are making a solution how concentrated it is or how much diluted it is so concentrated we have already understood that the amount of a substance which is there amount of substance which is there as the ratio of solute in a solution so they can be defined as the ratio of solute because concentrated means we are adding more solute into the solution so we have different other formulas as well if we have to uh, find out the concentration or what is the concentration of the solution so for example let's find out the exam uh, formulas mass by mass percentage we have to calculate then of course we have to first in the numerator we have to write down ma mass of solute because we have to calculate what is the amount of solute which is being dissolved in the solvent right so that will be divided by mass of solution and as we are calculating percentage so we will be multiplying it with 100 so whenever mass by mass so can you see mass and here also the mass so denominator we are writing down here as the solution and we know how we can find out the solution solution is solute plus solvent so if in any particular question numerical if in it is asked and if the solvent is given to you and solute is given to you so you can add both and calculate the solution put it in the denominator and find out the concentrated value similarly this is the first formula let's move to the second formula which is volume by volume percentage so similarly we have this formula as well volume of solute divided by volume of solution and as we are calculating percentage so we will be multiplying it with 100 similarly we have mass by volume percentage so for example solid and liquid in the case so mass of solute divided by volume of solution into 100 and this is how we can calculate so these are all the formulas where we can calculate the concentration of a given solution so we have understood till now about homogeneous mixtures we have understood that how uniform they are and in homogeneous mixtures we have understood about solutions and the sol in the solutions we have understood how it is being made solute plus solvent we have understood about different other types of solutions as well and also most importantly we have understood the properties that how they cannot be differentiated how they are totally dissolved not being separated by the filtration method also we have understood about the saturation point unsaturation solution concentrated and the dilute solution as well and when we have to calculate the concentration of the solution we can find out using these formulas so this all comes under the pure substances yes till now we have understood about the pure substances now let's move to the impure substances so as impure substances we have made so that means the other examples we have to understand so let's understand it in the non uniformity way because all the uniformity we maintained in the pure substances so let's find out the other examples the first one we going to understand is the suspension suspension they are formed when of course two or more substances are mixed in a non uniform way means constant proportions are not there that means they are the heterogeneous mixtures they are the heterogeneous mixtures and they are called as suspensions whatever i'll explain it with the solution way as well as we know it is being 
require solute and solvent is required to make a solution so similarly two things are also required to make a suspension minimum two things so when if this solute is not dissolved in the solvent that means we are making a suspension but if the solute is dissolved in the solvent we are making a solution like salt in water sugar in water but what if we add sand into the water no it does not dissolve so we can see the other layer being formed we can actual differentiate it right and we can actually see the particles lying here and there in the water in the beaker so this is how we can understand the differences and in the properties of solution and suspension so let's understand the properties of suspension one by one firstly we have understood that it's a heterogeneous mixtures secondly let's understand what happens when the path of light will be traveling through the suspension particles yes we can see the path of light the path of light gets visible when it is passed through the suspension particles then these particles of suspension they settle down at the bottom settle down at bottom so we can take an example let's take in sand and water so here is the beaker we have added water into it and then we will be adding sand into it so let's add now sand and let's see what can happen so after some time we can see the sand is going to settle down at the bottom and this is how we can differentiate that yes different particles we can see so they are settling down at the bottom and if they are settling down we can definitely separate it using filtration and yes we have to make sure they are left undisturbed so that we can easily filter it out so we can separate it out by filtration so these are the major properties of a suspension and difference between the solutions and the suspensions we have already understood as well so let's make one more mixture which is colloids or we can say colloidal solution and in the suspension particles we can see through the naked eyes because their size are very very larger as compared to the size of solution that we cannot see through the naked eyes but the size of the colloids yes they are also greater than the size of the particles or size of the solution but lesser in size as compared to the colloid so we have become the size particle size solutions more than colloids and then we have the suspension so this is the particle sizes in the greater amount so let's understand about the colloids that they are also uniform solution they are the uniform solution which of course require two or more substances and their particle size is smaller as compared to the suspension particle size so that is the major difference that we can find out so if the particle size is smaller than the particle size of suspension so that means and also they are the uniform solution so we have got to know that these are the homogeneous mixtures but why we are creating it more why we, they, they are not coming under the category of a solution because their particle size is greater than the solution's particle size and one more property they are differentiating that yes the path of light will also get visible through this and they can produce the tyndall effect where the solution particles the path of light is not visible in there so the particles scatter a beam of light which is passed through the colloids and they produce the tyndall effect and these particles also yes they are do not settle down just like the same solution particles and yes of course we cannot separate it through the filtration as well 
so some properties are similar to the properties of solution but some are different because they because of their particle size so using the particle size we are understanding different other properties of these solutions so these are the colloids as well so as we have understood in the solution solids and solids solids and gas liquid and liquid liquid and gas solid liquid similarly colloids are also being made from two things let's understand so these are having two phases number one phase is the dispersed phase in this dispersed phase the particles or we can say it's these are the solute like components which are being mixed in the dispersing medium dispersed phase are being mixed in the dispersing medium and they are substances which are just like solvent like particles or components so let's understand types of colloids with their examples so for example if we have dispersed phase and dispersing medium let's find out so dispersing medium if it is gas so this is the medium and this is the phase if it is gas and dispersed substance we can say is the liquid so the colloidal type is being formed here is aerosol just for example fog okay and uh, if the same the medium is the gas one where the subs where the dispersed phase is the liquid again it is the aerosol smoke that can be the example and if it is the liquid one and uh, the medium is gas we can say foam the colloidal substance formed is the foam for example soap whipped cream these are all the colloidal examples for the foam let's make the medium liquid as well as the phase liquid so we can find emulsion as the colloidal type so that we can find through the milk mayonnaise that we used to have and uh, if we have the liquid as the medium and we have the solid as the phase then we can find it out at sole so the sole will be formed for example paints so these are the colloids that we can follow now let's move to the solid one if we have the solid and gas then solid foam we can find and if it is solid let's make in another one let's solid and liquid then solid emulsion will be formed if the again both the medium and phase are solid then solid sole will be formed so these are the varieties or and types of the colloidal solutions so in this session we have understood about homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures depending upon the size the particle size they are carrying and different properties we have understood thank you so much